2014 2015 Common Council. Will the clerk please read the quote for the day? There is a value to having common goals, and the only way to create them is to listen to each other before we push our own agendas or dismiss the opposition. Thank you very much. Will the clerk please call the roll for the meeting? Uh, yes, there are 15 present. Uh, David Van Akron is uh, excused. Next, we'll go on to the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll go on to approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we we'll call the roll. Just a voice vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, there are no resignations and no council appointments. Um, next is a presentation. Um, I'd ask Denise Cornell from the uh, Sheboygan Youth Sailing Club to join me at the podium. Some years ago when the uh, marina project was started, uh, the Sheboygan Development Corporation wanted to see that there were some uh, attributes, some things put into Deland Park that would really benefit the community. And one of those uh, items that we raised $1.2 million for at that time was the youth sailing building. And people in the community got behind that. We purchased Optimus dinghies and they were on their way to teaching the youth how to sail. And uh, this proclamation kind of recognizes that investment of time and effort over the years, because when we put that building up, we really didn't know what would happen, and it's just amazing uh, the way their program has expanded. So this proclamation is presented, whereas the origin of the Youth Sailing uh, Club can be traced back to the mid-80s when members of the Sheboygan Yacht Club recognized a need for a sailing program and focused on the youth in Sheboygan, and whereas the Sheboygan Yacht Club set up the Youth Committee for the purpose of establishing a nonprofit organization to provide sailing lessons, and in March of 89, the Sheboygan Youth Sailing Club was formed. And whereas collaboration between the City of Sheboygan, the Sheboygan Development Corporation, and the Sheboygan Yacht Club resulted in fundraising and construction of the Youth Boating Center, which was completed in June of 1994. And whereas the Sheboygan Youth Sailing Club is thankful for the major support received from both Windway Capital and the Bratz Family Foundation for their generous fleet of boats and donations, and whereas the Sheboygan Youth Sailing Club's mission is to assist youth and adults in learning how to sail water safety at a reasonable price and cultivate an appreciation of our natural resources and birthright, the waters off of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Now, therefore, I, Mike Vanderstein, by virtue of the office vested in me as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim that the city of Sheboygan express its best wishes to the Sheboygan Youth Sailing Club on the occasion of its 25th anniversary. Denise is uh, currently involved in the leadership of that group, and I'd just like to offer you a chance to say a few words, Denise. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We certainly appreciate your proclamation. I am the president of the Sheboygan Youth Sailing Club, and we did just celebrate our 75th uh, I'm sorry, 25th year um, this year and had a uh, nice event on, on Saturday to um, celebrate again our 25th year. We've had a lot of, we've been blessed with very generous community to be involved with and the city's also been very supportive of us, so. Well, keep up the great work and congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Next is public forum. Uh, yes, we have one this evening, Jim Smith. And Jim, can I have your home address, please? 6314 South 18th Street. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Thank you. I'm here to represent Advanced Disposal on the item 5.3 on the agenda for this evening. Um, I want to comment a little bit about, first of all, I think there are a couple very good responses that you got to your your request for approval. <laughs> um, and I think that we can agree that it will be more costly to deliver the waste and recycling streams to the Sheboygan Falls transfer station as opposed to 
ours here in Sheboygan. And Mr. Director put together a very nice analysis, and one of the spots I would like for him to revisit on here is where he highlights total additional distance to MSB, which I believe is a shop down here on New Jersey, per week per truck. And he's taken one trip to the disposal site in consideration, not the two, two trips that are normally made to deliver waste and recycling to the transfer stations. And he's also only taken into consideration one day as opposed to the five days in the week. His estimate of 624 miles per year is actually 6,240 miles per year. And don't need to beat on that topic any, but <coughs> combined the additional mileage to deliver waste and recycling to the transfer stations is about a 12,000 mile per year more mileage. And I've been in the waste and recycling industry for about 30 years, although I'm new to the Sheboygan area. Um, Garbage is garbage, no matter where you are in the, in the world, actually. And <clears throat> my experience shows that it costs about $100 an hour to operate a truck. You drive a truck 12,000 miles, and probably an average speed, some of it will be highway, of about 30 miles per hour. It's going to take about 400 more hours a year to deliver the waste stream and recycling stream to Sheboygan Falls as opposed to Sheboygan. At 400 hours a year and $100 an hour, that's about $40,000. And that number is about the difference in our two, two proposals for the bid. So on top of the, the cost being fairly, fairly equal that way, I would like to address a couple other items, which are we are a local company, we are managed locally, we are right here. You can reach out and touch us anytime for any, any need, any questions, any comments. I think we've had an extremely good relationship for the last five years, and I would like for that to continue. We also have 45 employees who support the local economy, local organizations. They, too, donate to the city and many charitable organizations here. And Advanced Disposal has a proven track record of giving to many police department activities, to fire department activities, to supporting many of the city events that go on on an annual basis, as well as helping with many organizations, the YMCA, many charitable organizations here in town. And I just wanted to share that with everyone. <coughs> thank you for the time, and thank you for the past five years. It's been a good relationship, I believe, for both of us. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. That's it for public forum. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to mayor's announcements. I want to remind everybody that uh, Trick or Treat for Halloween is going to be coming up on Halloween, Friday the 31st from 4 to 7. Be safe out there. And um, tomorrow at 6 o'clock, there's going to be a presentation on balancing Wisconsin's transportation needs, a community presentation at the Senior Activity Center uh, by Move Wisconsin Alliance. So just wanted to make you aware of that. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. That'll include items 2.2 through 2.13. 2.6 will lie over rather than be included in, for passage. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all our O's, uh, accept and adopt all our C's, and put all resolutions and ordinances upon their passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. <clears throat> item three is reports of officers. That'll include items three point one through three point six. Those all be referred to various committees. Item four will go on to resolutions. 
Uh, item 4.1 is a resolution by Alderman Heidemann authorizing the emergency repair and reconstruction of the sanitary sewer main on South 10th Street between Ashland and Mead Avenue. Alderman Heidemann. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Thank you for that motion and support on suspension. All those in favor of suspension, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Under suspension, please go ahead. Yes, then I'd like to um, put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion for passage? Under, under discussion, we discussed this at Public Works. What had happened is that that portion of the street is starting to sink, and while we have a contractor in town, we want to be able to get that, that company to come in and, and do the work while they're here, saving us some money. Thank you for that information. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? I think somebody has their mic uh, rubbing against something. If you could kind of see, correct that. Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 4.2 is a resolution by Alderman Donahue, Dassler, Boren, Hammond, and Vanderweel authorizing represented employees of IFFA Local 483 and ATU Local 998 the opportunity to participate in the city's Qualified High Deductible Health Plan in 2015. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I would uh, move uh, firstly to suspend the rules. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under suspension, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Under suspension, please go ahead. Thank you, and then I would uh, move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll. Nice. Motion passes. Um, items 4.3 through 4.5 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 5.1 is an RC by law and licensing to whom was referred RO number 119 of 1415, recommending denying a beverage operator's license 0546 based on his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on the application, his record of violations related to the license activity, and his record as a repeat law violator, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Under discussion. Is Kenneth Getch here this evening? He is not. We did invite him on two separate occasions, and he did not show up. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Nice. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is an RC by law and licensing who has referred RO 119 of 1415 <coughs> recommending denying beverage operator license 0541 based on his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the licensed activity, and his record as a repeat law offender. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Casey Vogel here this evening? He is not. Um, we voted 5 to 0 to deny the license. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Fifty 
15 ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is an RC by Public Works to whom was referred RO number 144 of 1415 and resolution number 75 of 1415, which recommended entering into a five-year contract for the transfer of residential solid waste and recyclable materials. Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to accept and adopt this res and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, the item is before us for discussion. Um, okay, if, Alderman if Heideman, did you want to continue? I'd like to call uh, uh, Director Beeble up because we might have some questions from uh, some of the individuals that the individual that wasn't there at uh, DPW. Okay, David Beeble, would you like to step forward? Did you have a question to direct to him, Alderman Heideman? I guess one of the questions I have is there was a statement made by the gentleman from Advanced Disposal. I'd like to get a correction from David or um, see what he thinks about that statement. Thank you. In, 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 in regards to the return trips to the MSB, he, he is correct. It really should be doubled that figure, which adds another 624 miles onto that figure. So for, for simplicity purposes, the total extra miles to transfer to Sheboygan Falls We'll, we'll round it to 8,000, excuse me, um, approximately miles, adding approximately about another $1,000 in, in fuel costs that we would have. So reducing the overall savings from the contracted tipping fee amount from around 41.8 to about 32,000 annually, 32,700. It's still an annual savings in terms of direct costs. Um, in response to the time is we've experienced um, we used to have a contract with waste management five years prior to this last contract where we hauled <coughs> to Sheboygan Falls did not feel and have a, any impact in terms of time delay that impacted our labor costs our labor costs are a, are a fixed item in our budget so if they're transporting to and from that's part of their their time to do their job and there is also some benefit with our new trucks to get run on the highway. Uh, it helps with some of the, the regeneration for emissions control. So there, there's factors in either way, but the bottom line with the pr two proposals is, is cost savings to the citizens of Sheboygan. That's why we have a five-year contract. We go up for proposals to see what the market bears. Um, this is no way we have an excellent relationship with advanced uh, very high quality great work but at the end of the day when we got proposals we look at cost the cost to our budget and the cost to the taxpayers of the community and our recommendation is to enter into contract with waste management thank you Alderman Boren thank you mayor uh, Director Beeble, uh, the mileage figures that you're quoting and, and Mr. Smith quoted, is that for four trucks making two trips a day? I had heard that uh, <coughs> Mr. Smith's were five trucks doing two trips a day. What's, right. what's, we, what are we? We, we now have four trucks on our routes. We used to have five, <coughs> this is true. We used to have five trucks. Um, <coughs> tonnages have come down the la over the last, when we had the contract five years ago, we were about 1,000 tons annually more of garbage pickup than where we're at today. So our actual tonnages have come down, which has been good because it's also lowered our overall costs or kept our costs flat, um, given the fact that with inflation, uh, we've been able to hold the line on our garbage costs. But yeah, it is, it, it, we're, at, we're at four trucks a day. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Director Beeble, I was unable to attend the public works meeting, um, but I do appreciate the summary that you put together. It was very helpful to go through um, and read, and I appreciate the, the clarification um, on the mileage. Uh, my concern is, should the city at some future date, point in time within the next five years, decide to um, privatize or contract out the garbage with the private hauler, would there be anything in of the contract, the five-year contract, regardless of who we go with, that would be a financial um, disincentive to do that or penalty to the city should, should we do that? Uh, right now it's in the proposal stage. So when we finalize the contract, and that, would, that language in terms of if the city at some point during the five years 
would make the legislative decision to privatize garbage, that that could be written into the contract. So either one who we choose this evening would have that up front and know that. And then that would be, again, let out for um, proposals at that point and competitively bid. Um, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Director Beeble, just a quick question. Given the um, updated numbers you just provided, and you may not be able to do this off the top of your head, so I apologize for dumping this on you, but what is the actual savings then to the city if you use the 8,000 versus the other numbers? It, it, it ends up being right around $32,000 annually versus the, when, you, when you strictly went on the cost basis without factoring the trips, it was around $41,000 difference between the two thank you moving on alderman bellinger thank you mayor um so it's a negotiation negotiated um clause that would be put in and so what what would happen then should we decide as a legislative body to contract garbage out then would, would, the, would the existing contract be null and void or would that would that be up to the negotiation and the language that's, that's put into the contract i I guess I would like to have the city protected as much as possible and have that avenue open and not have, you know, language, you know, be so prohibitive to us financially to preclude us from looking at that option. Correct. I, if, if we go back to the either proposer who has decided this evening and we ask for that language to be added and they come back and say, sorry, if you do that, we're going to want a penalty clause. Well, then we're going to have to come back and, and talk about that and bring it back to this council for authorization. Or, other, or, or if they say, yep, that's fine, we don't have a problem with that, we'll probably bid on that work when it comes available at that point, that's fine if you want it out after two or three or even one year. Okay. Alderman Bourne. Thanks, Mayor. But that language would be in writing. Correct. That'll be part of the process. Would be, yes, it will. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Thank you, Dr Director Beeble. <coughs> Item 5.3 then is before <coughs> us. Would the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Uh, under ordinances, uh, item 6.1 will lie over. Going on to matters laid over. Item 7.1 through 7.6 are before us. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and, uh, accept and file. Second. And that would include uh, item 7.1 through 7.6. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderman Koss. Thank you, Mayor. I'm not seeing any document under the 7.1. I'm sorry? The document is not under 7.1. It's RO 122, 1415. It's right up here, Julie, on the screen. Okay, so 7.1, is there a separate document for that? Or 7-1? Well, there's, there's six separate documents and we're taking them all in one motion. Those so are all, all the RCs. There's all the RCs that <coughs> the committee's brought back. I think she's indicating, pardon the interruption, that there's a, the attachment's not on the board doc. You can't click on it. Oh, okay. And 7-1 actually had the garbage fee in it, did it not? Was the garbage fee not part of 7.1? No. No. Be seven 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 eight. Is there any other discussion? Alderman Bourne. Yeah, if you could repeat that, I didn't hear that back here. What you said about Alderman Koss' question about the garbage fee being in seven one. I thought I heard that it's somewhere else, but I didn't hear where. Alderman Hammond. I believe 7-1 um, is the unreserved fund balances um, and a summary of our outstanding debt 
as of 1231-2014. Um, um, the garbage fee would be the revenue or be revenue and that would be contained in 77 and 78. Thanks. You're welcome. Any other discussion? Okay, we're voting on the motion, including items 7.1 through 7.6. Would the clerk please call the roll? Let's back up, and who made the motion? And who seconded it? Fourteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 7.7 .7 is resolution number 65 of 1415 by Alderman Hammond, Bellinger, Carlson, Donahue, ordering the 2015 budget appropriations for City of Sheboygan funds. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion in support. Under discussion. Alderman Heideman. Alderman Lassard. Yes, thank you. Um, I believe it's appropriate to bring this up once again regarding the broken window syndrome that I've talked to you all about and sent out paperwork. I'm proposing that we add $25,000 to the budget and also offset it by $25,000 to pay for a part-time code enforcement officer um, with the report that we have gotten from Chad. Uh, we are, uh, I believe, um, I could ask him exactly what the figure was, but we're over 100000 in extra funds in that department. And I believe that with the citations that can be written and um, the city can and be better inspected because of the new construction, our code enforcement officers are out doing new building. We don't have as many out there checking our code enforcement. And I believe it'll pay for itself. Um, we won't be paying any benefits, and it, it will, I'm certain the revenue will be higher. That's why I'm asking to add 25000 to and then remove 25000 with a part-time code enforcement officer. Thank you. Thank you for that amendment. Is there a second? Second. Uh, the amendment is before us for discussion. Alderman Boren. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, thanks for bringing that forward, Alderman Lothstrad. I think that, didn't we already vote on that in 7.2, or do we have to vote on it again to appropriate the funds? I think that's tagged on at the end of document 7.2, and I think we voted on that already. Alderman Hammond. I think um, Alderman Person Lassard had a part-time clerk, or not <coughs> person, we voted on a part-time clerk as part of um, the public protection and safety budget. Now, I just need, I guess, a clarification. You're looking to hire code enforcement officer, correct? Correct, this would be two different. So there'd be another additional position. So this would be an amendment to the, the current budget. Can you maybe explain, or? if that's okay. Uh, how are you going to pay for this again? I'm sorry, I wasn't following that. I'm sorry. I believe oh. that we'll be able to be able to finance this, and I know that it shouldn't be a revenue generating department, but there is um, the ability to go out and check all these buildings that and of houses and apartments that are in the Sheboygan area that are not being attended to now because our building inspecting department is is taxed. So we have one inspector checked, checking part-time the north side. I think if we can add to it in a year-round position a part-time code enforcement officer, the funds to be able to take care of his salary will be generated very quickly in just the code enforcement violations. I think that if we do not hire an additional help to this department, you will see a definite decline in the amount of revenue we are going to see next year in our code enforcement department. So I believe that it's going to not only help our city, clean up our city, and maintain the city to which we have grown accustomed, but it will pay for itself. Does Alderman that Hammond, did you have any follow-up nope, then? No, I'm sorry, you can. Are you finished, Alderman Lassard? Yep. Okay, thank you. Alderman Carlson. 
Thank you, Mayor. Uh, could we possibly ask Chad to come up here? I have a few questions for him. Chad, would you please uh, join us <coughs> in the front? Please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Don't mean to put you on the spot, but could you give us an estimate of um, how many outstanding tickets we have right now and what's kind of the uh, collection rate, you, you could say? Well, I can't speak to the collection rate. Once we issue the citation, that gets turned over to municipal court into their system. Um, how many do we have outstanding right now? <coughs> Probably, well, we issued 650 some orders to date and cited about 290 uh, parties. I would say we're getting about a 50 to 60% compliance out of those. Um, so I, you know, I don't know if, I, I don't know where the collection is at. I can just tell you what I see on our end. Um, I don't know that I'm really answering your question, but I don't know what the collection rate is. That's really a municipal court question. Okay, and then, um I know you made a comment about it uh, within PPNS, but what's your opinion on ha having another um, code enforcement officer out there? This is really a decision of yours, um, but I think that I've, I've said this before is, you know, good, bad, or indifferent as the building industry picks up our two inspectors, the north side and the south side inspectors that have typically done code enforcement are now busy doing commercial building inspections. So. Um, that leads it to one part-time, one full-time position, uh, the housing inspector, but he, when the electrical inspector's on vacation, he fills in for that. So, you know, I, I think, is it needed? Probably, and could that person be busy? Definitely, when we've had a seasonal person in 2009, they were able to uh, fulfill a lot of orders on properties and make a difference, uh, but it really comes down to financials. Anything else, Alderman Carlson? I just have a few more, but things to say, but I don't need Chad anymore. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chad. <laughs> Thanks, Chad. Uh, Alderman. Do you have, want to continue? I, I can wait if you've got another question. All right, we'll go on to Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I voted for, in, in salary and grievance, I voted for the one part-time uh, uh, building inspection clerk. Uh, and I would like to support this, uh, but I'm, I'm not going to support document 7.7 .7 as a whole. Is it a possible to separate out this position and vote on that separately? That's my first question. And my second question is for Chad. Uh, I know the uh, part-time building inspection clerk is going to be, uh, uh, how do I say it, a group one as far as salary? Grade one. We're a grade one. Where would, where would this person be that? Older person uh, Lazard is talking about. I would say this person would probably be in the grade one or two okay. era. And okay, I, I understand what that range is. Then my other, that's all I have for Chad, but could we vote on the position separately or do we have to take it as a total of document 7.7? .7? Well, it's an amendment, so we will be voting on the amendment separately and then the, the main motion after that. So we're going to vote on the position separately. Yeah, the Ald Alderman Lassard made an amendment to the motion, and so we'll vote on that uh, as an amendment separately. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and maybe more procedural than anything, but, um, and I too don't necessarily have a problem. I think it, it's probably well needed given the amount of new construction going on in the community. Um, however, um, if we're going to increase an in expense, you know, we need, there needs to be a corresponding revenue increase in order for the budget to be balanced. Um, and so I'm just trying to figure out again, which line item in here um, from a revenue standpoint is gonna increase to cover this expense, um, unless we're reducing expenses in a different area to cover this. So um, wanna, that's what I'm trying to figure out here. Well, we could either uh, make an amendment to the amendment that's on the floor or we could pass it and then come up with it after that in a separate uh, amendment. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, there's two reasons why I can't support this. One is financial. Um, sure, we may be up in revenue this year uh, and we may be up again next year. Um, there's a lot of building projects going on and that's a great thing. We don't know if that's gonna continue and at the level that we're at. Um, the projects that are going on right now are big. Um, so there's big finan financial impact to the city. We can't guarantee that going forward. 
I can't support creating a new position just to eliminate it in two years due to another budget crisis. The second reason why I can't support it is, um, I believe Chad said there, said there was over 600 citations, um, 650 maybe. Um, that's a pretty big number. Um, I personally have spoken to a lot of people that have received citations. Um, everyone's in a big mess right now. A lot of people do not have the financial resources to make these corrections to their houses as much as they want to. I've been filing extensions on behalf of someone because just for whatever reason, financial, they just don't have the time to do it. So I, I think we could actually possibly even go backwards in terms of if we get more another building inspector out there and write more tickets, it doesn't necessarily mean that anything's gonna get fixed or if we're gonna see any revenue from it. It may just create more problems for our residents and I, I just can't support that. I, I think the system we have right now is working. It's not as fast as anybody wants it to be going. And once these projects are over, these big ones that are taking up so much time, they're gonna have more time to dedicate to the residential areas, and that's just my two cents there. Thank you very much. Alderman Lassard. Thank you. Um, I did spend a great deal of time talking to Judge Delahunt in the municipal court system and do have the printouts, and the majority of the citations that were written run approximately, as I said in my report, about $630, and then they're negotiated down to the 200 usually, and it's getting people's attention. And, and according to these figures, um, the majority of these items have been paid. The ones that have not been paid are, are some of these that have been outstanding in generating interest per day fees. I, I believe that this um, part-time position, though it be to be reviewed in two years, is necessity to our city. Um, I'm sure you've all driven around and you've taken a look at what we have and I, I can only assume that it's gonna get worse. We've been blessed with the new construction and, and our workers are working <coughs> very diligently in getting building permits, et cetera, being done. And I don't think that the rest of our city should fall by the wayside because we're short-handed. We don't have to pay benefits. I, I feel that we are going to make more than enough in revenue to cover the $25,000, which includes the Social Security that this employee would, would be required. And we can review this again in two years, perhaps when um, our new construction has dwindled down some and do away with this position or this person could full, fill in for some retirement. So I'm, I'm really urging you all to support this. Um, I care a great deal about the curb appeal of the city. We're trying to get new businesses to come here and stay here. And I think this is just gonna enhance what we have now. So I encourage your support. Thank you. Is there any additional discussion? Other comment? Go ahead, City Attorney. Yes, I would think, uh, to follow up on uh, Alderman Hammond's uh, comment about balanced budget, uh, I think there needs to be some offsetting revenue, either, either it goes towards additional tax levy or it, it's uh, an expense or excuse me, additional revenue in the department or whatever, but I think that really needs to be part and parcel of the request to, uh, to spend more money is to uh, indicate also where that money is gonna be coming from. Alderman Lassard. Um, I'm not certain what department receives all the funds for um, the municipal court but that would be the department I would like to increase the revenue to $25,000 additional and then offset it with the part-time code enforcement officer. So I would, I'm would i gonna turn to... Um, Do you wanna make that an addition to your amendment? I thought I had said that initially, but perhaps I didn't bring clarity to it. Yes, I want to add $25,000 and then hire it part-time is I need some um, assistance as to what department that would be. Um, I, I have to refer to the finance want, guys. Who, who is the person that seconded? Alderman Matichek, did you want to accept that? Yes. Next, I'd like to ask uh, Administrator Modio to come up here and, and tell us if that's the proper way to do this. <coughs> The uh, special assessments would come through municipal court, so the the revenue in municipal court uh, would have to be raised by twenty-five thousand dollars. 
and we take that as a transfer in to the general fund from Unicourt plus their expenses for processing and uh, that would offset or balance the additional 25000 of expense. Thank you for helping Alderman Lassard out with her amendment. Uh, Alderman pleasure. Bourne. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> I know for a fact that the municipal court uh, also uses the TRIPS program similar to uh, what the fire, de what our billing service for the ambulance service uses to uh, collect accounts. So those accounts, uh, if they're not paid willingly, you may say, uh, for, the, for the citations that are written, uh, if they're not paid voluntarily, then the municipal court will also put that through the TRIPS program, which is the tax intercept program. So. I think there's a good chance that if some of these fines are not being paid voluntarily, they'll be coming out of uh, income tax refunds. And I would find it hard to believe that with that many more uh, uh, tickets being written through the entire process of just collecting them voluntarily by the municipal court, and if not that, the TRIPS program, I would find it hard to believe that that wouldn't generate at least $25,000 for the year. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, uh, Mayor. <coughs> Once again, just creating this position doesn't guarantee revenue coming back to the city. I think we'd be better served as a city to continue working with these neighborhood associations and working with the residents because there are people out there that can simply not afford to make these uh, corrections to their houses. It's just not possible on their incomes. So keep in mind, this all sounds good on paper, but until you're actually affected by this citation, it, it, it's, it, I personally don't think it's gonna be a good thing. So just keep that in mind. Thank it's you. the law of unintended consequences. Is there any other discussion on the amendment? See now, none will the clerk please. Uh, we have another one? No, okay. Uh, would the clerk please call the <laughs> Alderman <laughs> Donahue? <clears throat> Just to chime in on the $25,000 part of our $35 million budget. Um, uh, first of all, there's a presumption that all of the citations will go to municipal court and that all of those citations will be collected upon in order to balance. And so my question is, if that doesn't happen, uh, if in fact people you know, pay up or whatever, um, if there is a deficit, would we be taking that from the municipal court budget? I think we need to speak to Alderman Hammond's concern about presenting a balanced budget. And so I, typically we would like to get rid, you know, deal with these things in committee so that we aren't squabbling about $25,000, but I, I, I am a little confused. Not, not all of these citations are going to go to municipal court. And the plain fact of the matter is that, um, uh, that, um, there are people who just don't have the money to make these repairs. Thank you. Is there any other comments? Now will the clerk please call the roll for passage on the amendment that's before us. Okay, the motion is to amend to add $25,000 for code, <coughs> enforcement, I'm sorry, code enforcement officer part-time and add $25,000 revenue to the municipal court. Correct. Five ayes, ten noes. Motion's defeated. Item 7.7 .7 is before us without the amendment. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll for passage on resolution 65? Advice, three no. <coughs> Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to item 7.8, resolution number 64 of 1415 by Alderman Hammond, Bellinger, Carlson, and Donahue ordering 
the 2015 budget appropriations and the 2014 tax levy for use during calendar year 2015. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support <coughs> and under discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage. Eleven eyes, four no's. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to other matters. City Attorney. 8.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2014, December 31, 2015, and June 30, 2016. That will be referred to Law and Licensing. 8.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from NEMAC requesting encroachments for directional signage on the property located at 4243 Gateway Drive. Referred to the City Planning Commission. 8.3 is an ordinance granting NEMAC its successors and assigns the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of Gateway Drive located at 4243 Gateway Drive in the city for the purpose of installing and maintaining directional signage. That will also be referred to the City Planning Commission. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you very much for your attendance.